This is ARN, the American Racing Network. Drivers, start your engine! Get ready, strap in, and hold on. We're getting the green starting right now. It's a pretty basic understanding. I'm always going to speak my mind, and I'm not going to hold back. I don't even know how that works. It's an entertainment sport, not a fair sport. You're shifting gears on ARN with Alan Bailey. Oh yeah, gearheads, don't look now. We're back. I'm Alan Bailey. Welcome on into Shifting Gears number 124. Had to make sure I got the right number. Just double checking. It is Thursday, June 9th, 2022. And oh boy, do we have a lot of ish to talk about between, um, you know, safety issues in NASCAR. Big surprise. Uh, rookies coming up up into the Xfinity Series. Uh, Gateway slash Worldwide Technology Raceway put on a heck of a show over the weekend. Is aggressive driving in NASCAR a problem that we need to solve? Uh, AJ Allmendinger winning up at Portland. How was Portland? Should we be racing up in Portland? I'm going to break that down for you today and oh by the way what is going on with Kyle Busch's contract why hasn't he signed that thing and is Martin Truex Jr. going somewhere next season is he leaving Gibbs or is he going to resign or is he going to retire what's going to happen well we're going to talk about it and break it all down let's get into this week's hot topics powered by American Racing Network log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest news and headlines you need to know ARN the Motorsports Authority Yes, it was Joey Logano that outdueled Kyle Busch in the closing laps out at Gateway, also known as Worldwide Technology Raceway, for the very first cup race out in St. Louis. And man, did it put on a heck of a show. We will talk about it. As for the Xfinity Series, they raced out at Portland for the first time. Yes, that Portland. And yes, it's a road course. And yes, it happened to rain. But a lot of controversies happening at this racetrack. Namely, does this track actually deserve a NASCAR-sanctioned event, a national-sanctioned event? We will break this down, because a lot of people are saying no way. Carson Husevar transported to a local hospital after his brutal truck crash in the closing laps. Onboard video showed that he was literally screaming for help while safety officials were unable to hear him, let's just say. What's going on with NASCAR and safety officials? We're going to talk about it and break it all down. Corey Himes ended up winning that truck race for Kyle Busch Motorsports. After 12 years of trying, Jason Anderson won at Hangtown for Moto Outdoor Series round number two. And Will Power went ahead and grabbed the victory at the Detroit Grand Prix based off a very, very good strategy. For these stories and more, log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com, ARN, your motorsports Authority At Hey Alan Bailey, you can send me little tidbits and little snippets of anything that you want to say to bring your uh, thoughts and opinions into this conversation as well. And do me a huge favor. Since you're there, make sure that you go ahead and that you uh, actually hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this, whether it's uh, whatever podcast app you're listening to the audio only version or whether you're on YouTube just listening to the YouTube version of this, make sure that you mash that subscribe button because it helps us out so darn much when you do. Uh, Now, honestly, there's a lot to go through. There's a lot to unpack from this week. I'm not going to sit here and deny that because there was uh, there's controversy I mean, big surprise. It's the racing industry. It's NASCAR, and there's controversy. We go to a new racetrack, uh, two new racetracks, kind of, sort of, technically, over the weekend. And, yeah, there's, um, you know, some controversies. So let's just start at the top. What happened out at uh, Gateway? Well, we actually saw some pretty darn good racing. Yeah, I hate that it was Logano and Kyle Busch, not because I hate those two drivers more than anybody else, but because fans seem to hate those drivers more than anybody else. So yeah, I hate the fact that the two most hated guys in NASCAR were battling one-two for this victory. It kind of sucked in all honesty, but you got to admit, for a racetrack that is fairly flat, that behaves a lot like New Hampshire meets Phoenix, um, it put on a heck of a little show. Hell of a good show, actually, I'd say, because honestly, I was entertained the whole time. We didn't anticipate to be entertained for that cup race or the truck race the whole time because Gateway hasn't seen a race in a number of years, almost over a decade at this point. And yeah, 
a lot of that facility needs to be upgraded, but I think that this first race showed, hey, don't look now, but this track puts on a heck of a show, and the fans, whoo, you think the Gateway fans, you think the St. Louis fans want to see more NASCAR Cup racing? My gosh, they showed up on Sunday, and good for them, man. That's how you keep a date. That's how you convince NASCAR to give you a date or a second date. Show up. Because I, I'm honestly sick of a lot of these tracks that are complaining, oh, we lost our second date. Oh, we lost our date. Oh, the racing was phenomenal there. Yeah, well, if it was phenomenal, why didn't you go to Chicagoland? Huh? Why, why did you not go if you're in the Chicago area crying, oh, I miss my NASCAR? Why didn't you go to that race? Because guess what? Had you gone to that race, you would have kept the date. They wouldn't have closed the track. And no, it's not officially being bulldozed, but it's basically all but being bulldozed. And will NASCAR find a way around that? Yeah, I think they're going to end up announcing a Chicago street circuit, which literally the whole city will go to and literally everybody's going to love it no matter if the racing is crap or phenomenal and let's be honest it's a road it's a street course with cup cars so mm, chances are it's going to be crap but it's going to be entertaining crap and it's going to be in Chicago and a lot of people a lot of national media are going to be paying attention to that um, which is good for the sport inevitably same uh, similar to what we saw with the LA Coliseum uh, in 2022 here so and no I'm not I'm not breaking that news it's not officially happening but Steve O'Donnell did talk with the media outside of an event in um, San Francisco today and in that I guess little reporter scrum Bob Pockers asked him a number of things and yeah, he said, yeah, we're working on this. This is a possibility. I can't say anything, but they're going to be making radical changes to the new schedule that is supposedly coming out sometime in August. Could be announced sooner or later. Not 100% sure. Um, they're very much still kind of trying to figure out what they're going to be doing with that one, I think. Um, now, I want to talk about Carson Husevar. Husevar. Um yeah, he took a hell of a hit, y'all, in that truck race. My gosh, that was a hell of a hit. And I honestly don't know uh, what NASCAR needs to do here. And I'm being 100% honest right there. Because you look at what IndyCar does with their safety um, officials. They have the same core team that go to every single race. Um and they travel with them. I think that's what NASCAR needs to do. With NASCAR, um, you have a lot of local guys and a lot of not-so-local guys that get hired to officiate that race. I know um, I'm, a, I'm the track announcer out at Orange Show Speedway, and I know that at least one or two of our officials who officiate our races in San Bernardino, California, who live in Southern California, flew out to the Coke 600 to help be fire and safety officials for that race. Let me tell you right now, I love my Speedway. I love my hometown track. But the person that was showing me photos from Pitt Road of the Coke 600 is an older gentleman who is not in the best shape, who is not 100% cognitively there. I am blown away, blown away that NASCAR hired him. Blown away. And I'm not saying, listen, this is an older gentleman. He's He was great at what he did. Um, frankly, I think it's time for him to retire because he's not 100% there like he used to be. I love the guy. I'm not going to call him out by name here, but I'm just saying he shouldn't be helping an official NASCAR race in any capacity. So I, I, I'm blown away that that's what NASCAR resorts to. Um, honestly, I, I truly think that they need to hire people. They need to train people. Um, and that the fire officials who were going to these drivers need to be medically trained. Some of them are not medically trained. The ones who are first on the scene are not medically trained nine times out of 10. It's normally a fire official in some capacity. And yes, a fire official does need to be one of the first people to that vehicle. I agree with that, but Carson, through this clip that got put on Twitter, that um, it his his radio came unplugged due to the violent hit that he took. So it wasn't the in car uh, radio; it was the in car audio from one of the TV cameras. The TV camera itself lost video, but somebody synced it up with the actual footage uh, from TV uh, that is available. The raw footage, I should say, and it leaves NASCAR in a damning position because he literally, and this is where he screwed up admittingly, he drops his window net and immediately starts screaming, 
help me, help me, someone help me. Ah, and he's like writhing in pain. You could tell he is in pain. And reportedly he had surgery on his ankle, according to Daniel Suarez, um, who is going to be on standby for Sonoma this weekend, the NASCAR Truck Series heading out to Sonoma uh, for the race on Saturday. And Suarez is there for the cup race on Sunday. So uh, because of the partnership, uh, with those two teams, Suarez is on standby. And the goal, the hope, the mm, hope we can still do this is that Carson starts the race and gets essentially credit for starting that race and the points that Suarez will finish. Um, he says he's going to try to go as long as he can. I think he'd be lucky if he completes a lap. Honestly, he might get black flagged after the first lap for not maintaining uh, minimal, not maintaining minimal speed. Because yes, he is recovering from a literal ankle surgery, reportedly, which means he is not going to have a fun time at a road course. So, I mean, hopefully he feels better very soon and and heals up quick here. Um, but I think he's kidding himself if he thinks he's honestly going to be making a championship run. And yeah, maybe he will. Maybe he's going to heal up very quickly. Maybe he's going to get back out there, win a truck race finally, and compete for a playoff spot and uh, make an, a legitimate run at the championship. But he ain't no Kyle Busch. He, he ain't going he ain't gonna to get off of a really tough surgery and just come back like nothing had happened. So I if I were him, I'd shut it down. Uh, NASCAR gives off playout uh, waivers like there's no tomorrow. I Oh, you got a little sniffle? Okay, yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. And yes, I'm not making light of COVID. I'm saying that um, NASCAR has passed out waivers left and right. I mean, they were saying that they were going to give Kyle Busch one had he needed to miss the race for the birth of his second child through his surrogate. So... I, I mean, NASCAR seems fine with it. The thing that they're trying to avoid with that rule, I believe, is literally drivers saying, you know what? I don't like going to Martinsville. I'm really bad there. I already have four wins, so I'm done. We're not going to that race. That's what NASCAR is trying to prevent here. They're not trying to keep people who are hurt out of the playoffs. And I do think that NASCAR kind of gave themselves a bad light because Kyle Busch got hurt. He got hurt really badly, um, and I'm amazed he was able to recover that quickly. And the fact that Kyle Busch recovered and uh, ironically got hurt in Daytona and returned at Sonoma, which is where we're going this weekend, I think is very funny and kind of fitting to this because that's what kind of started everything. NASCAR gave Kyle Busch that waiver that year, and Kyle went on to not only win, but win the championship that year, even though he only competed in like half the races that year. So that was, uh, was just super weird. And I think very disrespectful to everybody else who raced the cup series, uh, the full season. Um, you know, am I saying Kyle Busch didn't deserve that championship? I'm saying NASCAR literally gave him a rule, uh, bent a rule, I should say, in order to make him eligible and, um, he was determined and hell bent, so it ended up working out somehow for him. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that NASCAR should be allowing Carson to race. I hate it when drivers race hurt, and they will always race hurt. They're always going to race concussed. They're always going to race with a broken bone. They're always going to duct tape their eyes open to some extent. But at the same time, if we're not allowing people who are on drugs, Jeremy Mayfield, to go out and compete in the Cup Series, in a NASCAR-sanctioned event, because they're impaired, because of being under the influence, you're telling me that Carson and anybody else who is racing hurt isn't on a painkiller of any kind? And I'm not dissing painkillers here. They're necessary. However, they do affect your cognitive skills noticeably, especially when you're racing at 200 miles an hour. Um, granted, this weekend it's going to be more like racing you know, 50 to 90 miles an hour, but the point still stands. So I, I, mm, I, I dislike it. I dislike the fact that NASCAR took that long to get to him. I think he screwed up because he lowered his window net. The universal sign at every racetrack across the planet at this point is that if you are not okay, leave your window net up. If you're okay, put your window net down. And he put his window net down probably because the adrenaline's still pumping and he probably put a little bit of pressure on that foot and realized, oh crap, that hurt. Ooh, I need help. 
oh god help 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 i need help and that's when he started crying for help and it took a little longer than it should have to get somebody to him yes they were going to the other vehicle that was a lot more heavily damaged but this goes back to nascar tower issues because nascar has had a very 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 sharp uptick on bad race calls bad officiating calls um we've seen it this season and a little bit of last season we're seeing a lot of um questionable cautions come out uh we're seeing a lot of issues happen on track and cautions not coming out when they clearly should have and you have a lot of issues with officiating this year i think that the race director for each of these series desperately needs to get his or her head out of their ass uh it used to be one guy who used to be the race director for all of nascar's top three series and yes it was a lot of work but when he retired you had these younger guys and girls take over that let's just say clearly are making mistakes and maybe it's somebody who was sitting alongside him for 20 30 40 years i don't know because nascar doesn't tell us we don't know who's in charge because it's kind of a rotation of different people nascar is essentially doing what fox is doing oh we have we we're not committing to a third person in the booth because we can't make up our mind because we don't really care about the nascar broadcast so we're just gonna like you know conveyor belt this and bring in a different nascar expert every week oh they have cars in the field and they clearly or bias towards these cars running good uh that's fine we'll let them call a race just because uh we don't really care make a fart joke real quick to distract from all this yay that's pretty much what's happening at nascar and fox right now so i mean i i hope that they get their ish together i sincerely hope that they get one set of uh officials to go to every single race because i think that that's desperately needed and i think that a doctor a licensed doctor needs to be put in a fire suit and needs to be in a car looking at these drivers on track not just in the infield care center but on track because god forbid one of these drivers gets seriously injured in a car the difference between life and death could be the doctor getting there that much sooner NASCAR needs to step it up. What happened over the weekend in the truck race was 100% unacceptable and very, very disturbing. NASCAR should be ashamed of themselves. They're the laughing stock of the motorsports community because of their quote unquote advances on safety. And it's absolutely ridiculous. NASCAR, get it together. You need to be better than this because you're going to kill somebody if you're not. Be better. Don't think about being better. Be better. Now, I want to shift gears here and talk about a little bit of silly season stuff. Um, MTJ, Martin Tricks Jr., driver of the number 19 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota in the NASCAR Cup Series. Is he coming back or is this his final year in Cup? Um, I don't know. He said on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio this week, yeah, I want to come back. Yeah, we're just working out the details. Um, K, why am I hearing that you hate this car and that you're still on the fence about coming back or not? They're just kind of entering talks with Gibbs and they're in the middle of, of negotiations as far as um, getting the sponsors back, getting Martin back, getting crew chiefs back, getting everybody back in place for 2023. And honestly, he's still Martin's still kind of week to week on whether or not he wants to do this again next year. I think... Part of this will be what happens with the 2023 schedule. I think he's kind of waiting for that. And maybe he has inside information from NASCAR knowing, hey, yes, we're doing this. We're not doing this next year. And he kind of has made his decision up a little bit. But I'm willing to bet he's waiting for that cup schedule. I'm waiting for the cup. We're all waiting for the cup schedule. We want to see what the new schedule is going to look like. Um we do know bits and pieces. We know when the Daytona 500 is going to be. We know that the uh, season finale is going to be out at Phoenix again next year because NASCAR is still trying to justify the one track that's up to 2022 um, codes and, and fan comfort um, because for some reason they haven't made their billions of dollars at that racetrack yet. So they need to make their billions of dollars before they're satisfied and move on to another one. But um, does MTJ go anywhere? Hell no. He, he has such a deep relationship with Bass Pro Shops, with his sponsors. He will never go anywhere else. Will he leave Toyota? Never. He has a very strong relationship with Toyota. He's not going anywhere. MTJ is retiring in that 19 car. Mark my words. Even if he wants to race for another three, four years, Gibbs is going to let him. And when MTJ decides, I'm getting out of this 19, 
then Ty Gibbs will get in it. Assuming that they sign Kyle Bush for next season. That's a whole nother count of uh uh-ohs because Kyle can't get paid, man. He has a very high price tag. And not one sponsor is stepping up saying, yes, here's money. Let's go. Are there sponsors that can step up and do that for Kyle Bush? Absolutely. But Kyle is trying to make money that Jimmy Johnson was making in the middle of his five-time championship run. Like, that's what Kyle Busch is going after. And that money just doesn't exist in NASCAR anymore. The costs of running these teams has gone up dramatically, despite what NASCAR will tell you. And NASCAR's not trickling down that TV money to the team, so the teams are eating it. And essentially, sponsors pay for a little bit of getting the car to the track each week. You would think it's 100%, but mostly sponsor money is going to paying the drivers these days. And drivers are pissed because, well, I've taken a pay cut. Well, you, you're pissed that you got, you're taking a pay cut. Well, go out there and promote yourself. You look at what some drivers are doing, and they're doing a lot. They're going out there trying to get TV shows going. They're trying to uh, create an online social media presence. They're going on anything out there uh, that they want. That's some of these drivers. Some. I would argue very few drivers are going out there trying to get interviews, trying to promote the sport. You have older generation drivers who turn down interviews because... No, I talked to him two weeks ago. I don't want to talk to him again. It's okay. I'm, I'm good with this one. We'll skip out. And that's where the problem is. Some of these uh, drivers in NHRA, IndyCar, even F1, they're extremely available to the media members. They're extremely available to fans. F1's particularly extraordinarily good at this. And NASCAR drivers, you got to pull teeth to get them to stay around. Hell, even you flash back about 10 years ago, Clint Boyer had just won at Sonoma. I was in I was in the, the media center and after uh victory lane, you get the winning car uh owner, the winning car crew chief and the winning driver in the press room um with microphones in their hands asking uh getting asked questions by media members who were typically writers, aka me. So I was asking them a question, and I was literally the last question. I did that on purpose. And guess what? As soon as I said, hey, question back here, Michael Waltrip, Clint Boyer, and I forget who Boyer's crew chief was at the time, all threw their head backs and went, ugh, and got so irate and so ugh over answering my one question. They were in that media center for not even 10 minutes. Ten minutes after winning a big race and making the postseason for Michael Waltrip, it's seeing uh, one of his cars get a victory. I think that was their second or third victory ever. So you think, oh, big deal. Ooh, I'm going to be hyped about it. And yeah, sitting down and talking about it isn't the most fun. Well, it's fun to me. And this is what I do for a living. But come on. Like, that's the problem with these guys. And the fact that both of them are stuck in a Fox booth right now uh, trying to promote the sport tells you all you need to know about NASCAR's mentality with their drivers promoting the sport. They have no interest. NASCAR drivers these days don't even want to go to personal appearances. Remember back in the day, you used to, like, whenever NASCAR came to town, your favorite driver would be at a local Walmart or Target or Lowe's or Home Depot or you name the sponsor, McDonald's, etc. They would be somewhere locally meeting with the fans promoting the upcoming race. When the hell was the last time we saw that? Take away COVID. When was the last time you saw a driver appearance list where there were multiple appearances in one given week? It's been a hot minute. Drivers these days, if you have to drive more than 10 minutes away from Charlotte, they go, nah, no thanks. Oh, I need to fly there? Oh, can you get me a private jet? Oh, you can't? No, I'm good. I won't do that personal appearance. Thanks. And it's ridiculous. That's the that's the era that these guys are in. These drivers are spoiled rotten, man. I'm telling you. And speaking of spoiled rotten, uh, sincerely, this this aggravates me. Driver aggression. Driver aggression. Ross Chastain, uh, I don't want to say it was all over the place over the weekend, but he was kind of all over the place over the weekend. Uh, he got into Denny Hamlin, effectively ended Denny Hamlin's day um, at a good finish. He got into Chase Elliott not soon after, and Ross Chastain is just in that, 
he 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 was straight up in a NASCAR Heat Five lobby. Like that's what was happening with Ross Chastain over the weekend at Gateway because Ross doesn't care. Ross literally no remorse, no nothing over the radio as he ran over the eleven and the nine, and then he got run over and. Everybody acted, Ross on the radio was acting like, oh, woe is me, they're coming after me. Ah." Ross has at least two shots coming back to him, at least. But Denny's smart. He's not going to wreck the one car um, when the one car's already locked into the postseason. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. You know what he's going to do? He's going to wait until the cutoff race where Ross is maybe in, maybe out because he cut a tire down or blew an engine or did something stupid. And then maybe, maybe, oh, no, Martinsville. Oh, I I just went in there too hot. My brakes locked up. I wheel hopped. I got into Ross, and I Matt Kenseth, Joey logano him into turn one. Oof. That's what Denny Hamlin's going to do. And frankly, I want to see it. I want to see it because you know that moment's going to build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And now Ross, every time he gets around the 11 car, every time he gets around the 9 car, he thinks, oh, God, are they going to hit me? Are they going to hit me? Oh, is it going to come? Is he he here? Is he here? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, don't come to my bumper. Oh, don't send it on me. Oh, these are the thoughts that are going to go through Ross Chastain's head. Or maybe they don't, and he's an idiot, and he's just going to let it go, and he's legitimately going to be surprised when the 11 car turns him uh, in front of the field at Martinsville. I don't know. But either way, it's going to be damn entertaining. Keep an eye on the 1, on the 11, on the 9, because that drama is so, so not over. Oh, yeah. That's definitely being built up, and I kind of can't wait for it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of all for it. Um, Joe Gibbs also announced that uh, Sammy Smith going to be running eight NASCAR Xfinity races for them this season. Um, yeah, I mean, Sammy Smith is the guy who has been setting the, the K&N series on fire. Um, he's a guy who has a lot of talent. He's been in the development uh, pipeline for Gibbs and Toyota for a hot minute now and uh, just turned 18 this week, which means, whoop, time to throw him in a cup car. <laughs> practically but no they're gonna throw him into eight xfinity races we kind of knew this was coming um i'm surprised they didn't announce it like a hot 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 minute ago but they were waiting on nascar approval and they got it this week apparently so yeah that's that's coming down the pipeline that came out uh earlier today and honestly i i i'm not gonna sit here and say oh the kid's gonna be the next ty gibbs oh the kid's gonna do this oh the kid the kid's getting into some of the best equipment in the xfinity series boy if he doesn't have a top 10 he's gonna be looking for a new job soon in my opinion i think he's gonna be running in the top five top 10 um win maybe I mean, Gibbs got a win, and I think Gibbs is about as good as Smith is. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely possible. It's extremely possible. But uh, we'll have to wait and watch and see. Uh, Sammy Smith, uh, honestly, I think he's going to end up taking the 11 car in two, three seasons, mark my words, because Gibbs, they already kind of announced that Ty Gibbs is going to be racing at least one more season in Xfinity. Um which means at the earliest uh, we're looking at 2024 for Ty Gibbs to jump up into the Cup Series, assuming that they stick with that plan, assuming that they re-sign MTJ and Kyle Busch uh, to the 18 and 19. But mark my words, I I foresee a future where um, MTJ signs a one-year contract, maybe a two-year, but probably a one-year contract with Gibbs. And in 2024, Gibbs is in the 19, and Sammy Smith... um, potentially takes over the 54 in the Xfinity at that point and then does Xfinity until either Kyle Busch or um, more than likely Denny Hamlin decide, yeah, I'm done and, and, you know, continue to uh, move up into the Cup Series. If I'm Christopher Bell, I'm sweating bullets. I know that people at Gibbs are frustrated that they lost Eric Jones because of the situation. Um but I'm telling you, man, Chris Bell's got to be sweating bullets at this point because he hasn't really produced this season. He had one solid victory last season, very early on in the season, and then just never lived up to that hype. And when you have um, other cars in your stable running as well as they are and you're not, um, they're looking at you going, hey, bud, what's going on? 
I mean, Gibbs has already demonstrated that they will pull anybody out of that 20 car and put anybody else in in order to win. Um, they pulled Matt Kenseth out for crying out loud. That's all you got to know. So um, the Toyota pipeline continues to be healthy, but at some point the pot will boil over like it always does, and they'll lose another Haley Deegan. They'll lose another um, driver to another uh, manufacturer, and Toyota will start to freak out. So... I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens with uh, Sammy Smith, but I can guarantee you, kid's going to be a phenomenal driver at some point down the road. Um, whether or not he has the Ty Gibbs success early and right out of the gate, or it takes him a season or two to get going, we'll have to wait and see. But kid's going to be a threat to win. I can guarantee you. Just continue to watch. Wanted to thank you so much for listening, uh, watching, if you're watching on the YouTube channel. Make sure that you guys uh, check us out on Twitch. We're now broadcasting with a brand new schedule over on Twitch uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That is noon Pacific, twitch.tv forward slash Hey Alan Bailey. You can also give us a follow on all of the social media accounts at Hey Alan Bailey. Links are in the description below. And you can also um, check us out on youtube.com forward slash Hey Alan Bailey. We got a lot of cool stuff happening on the YouTube channel right now. We are doing the NASCAR 21 Ignition Career Mode Season 2. Um, probably going to wrap it up after two seasons. I do not think I have a third season in me. Maybe if that new patch is great we'll do that but i'm not really like gung-ho about that if you know what i mean um we're also finishing up the f1 2021 my team career mode uh we've got about four races left i want to say in that series so i'm looking forward to that one uh we'll have nascar 22 coming out uh in less than a month actually on the channel and we've got uh monster energy supercross 5 the official video game career mode also going on the channel srx is making a comeback on the channel sometime in the near future Future. And oh, by the way, we still have some of the classics that we're going to eventually play later this season once F1 kind of calms down a little bit with the NASCAR Dirt to Daytona and the NASCAR Thunder 2003 seasons as well, or career modes, I should say, for both of those. So tons of cool content over on youtube.com forward slash Hey Alan Bailey, tons of great racing. And Nine times out of ten, whenever we have a big uh, decision to make as far as what team to sign with, it's in your hands. So it's kind of like you're playing with us. So come on over. Let's have some fun. want to thank you so much for listening. Make sure you mash that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this. Give us a five-star review. Give us a thumbs up. It helps us out so darn much when you do. Make sure that you log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com in order to check out all of these headlines and a whole lot more. AmericanRacingNetwork.com, your motorsports authority. That's going to do it for this episode, Gearheads. Thank you so much for listening. For Shifting Gears and the American Racing Network, I'm Alan Bailey. We will see you at the track. Bye now, Gearheads. You've been listening to the American Racing Network, a turn for media company. This is ARN the Motorsports Authority.